With every project I do, the goal is always to push harder and farther than I ever have before, and that was never more true than with Ballistic. My goal from the beginning was to bring Hollywood level quality without the Hollywood level budget. And pulling this off was all about getting the right collaborators and tools for the job. And I really lucked out with an amazing team of incredibly talented and passionate artists, which passion is key. If everybody wasn't fully invested in making this the best it could be, it never would have worked. And then you have the tools. For this one, I needed a camera that checked a lot of boxes. It had to be versatile, something that would flow with us and all the crazy things we threw at it. And size was gonna play a lot into that since we were doing everything from proper dolly setups to gimbal rigs and straight handheld. It also, of course, had to have incredible quality and maybe most important for us, it had to do all of that while staying at a low price point since we knew we had to rent a whole lot of them for some of the bigger stunt and special effects moments. And the camera that we found checked all of those boxes was of course the Canon C200. Thanks to the price of this one, we were able to get our hands on an extra four cameras for production, which totaled us out to around seven cameras while still giving us the ability to shoot 4K on DCI Cinema Raw Light, which is the format that gave us great quality and a ton of room in post. I also wanted to shoot anamorphic on this. It has an aesthetic that I love, a grit and character I felt that this story needed. And of course, the C200 doesn't shoot 4.3, so I use the SLR Magic anamorphic lenses, which have a 1.33 times squeeze instead of the two times, giving you the ability to use them on 16.9 sensors. Two of our C200s had PL mounts on the camera, but all the rest of them were EF mounts. For those, we had an EF to PL adapter, which worked perfectly. So we were able to fly anamorphic lenses on any of the cameras that we needed at any time. The one consideration while shooting anamorphic on this camera was the fact that it doesn't de-squeeze in camera. So we used the small HD monitors like my 703 Bolt to add that de-squeeze, and we were able to monitor the image properly. Anamorphic lenses do add some other challenges like the minimal focal distance and the lack of telephoto lenses. So for some of those specialty moments, Moments, we did have a few spherical lenses on hand, and those two cut together seamlessly because we were careful about when and where we use it. In quick moments and less busy backgrounds, the two work together well, you just have to be careful with it. On set, we had a few Canon Primes and the Canon 30 to 300, which really came in handy often, especially with the more dangerous moments like the opening car gag. For the rest of the action, we were usually either handheld or on a Movi, and on the Movi, we used the C200B. It's a more stripped down body with no EVF, so it's perfect for gimbal work like this. So we built out and left our C200B on the Movi for the entirety of the shoot. That way it was always ready to go whenever we wanted to go with the gimbal. Like on the camera bike, my DP was able to jump on the sidecar of the camera bike and add the gimbal in to get a solid driving shot like our opener. The gimbal inside of this setup was even more important with our baddies approaching. We were going much faster and over bumpy ground. So that combo of the C200B and the Movi and the camera bike coming together made it work perfectly. But for other action moments involving stunts, especially bigger stunts, we had a lot of cameras working at once and usually all of them at 60p. That way later we had options to let it play or slow the moment down to make it feel bigger. But if you take a moment like the batty chest explosion. For this, we had our incredible FX artist, Todd Tucker, create a fake body that we could blow up on the day. This was made out of foam so that they could cut a piece out and pack it full of explosives. And when we finally did blow it up, it would be safe for our performers close by because there wouldn't be any harmful projectiles coming off like plastic. So on set, our lead effects artist Frank prepped the dummy and set what distance we could safely shoot from, which was another place the zoom lens came in handy. Then for some of the closer cameras, we had some plexiglass protecting our camera and operator. Since there was no real dangerous projectiles, we could get decently close because we were also using this car here and that plexi as a shield for our closest cameras. So I went around with with all my camera operators and set a bunch of backup cameras in case anything went wrong with my main angle. Then on action, the boys took it away. We had the exploding body and two wire pulls all in one. And that's how pretty much all of the stunts and effects went, mixed in with all of us moving crazy fast since we were on a very low budget for what we were trying to pull off. That means we have less days than we really needed, which means packing a ton of setups and gags into one day. A huge help in us pulling all of this off was using available light. I wrote it all to happen during the day, knowing we could just use the sun and move. And of course, being in the harsh sun meant using tons of ND, which luckily the C200 has built-in NDs that work beautifully. So we were able to just use those all day without the need for renting extra filters or moving them from camera to camera. Then it was just a matter of my DP Chase Smith modifying that sunlight when needed, like with some negative fill, diffusion, or a bounce. And of course, we knew we had some room to adjust in post with some nice highlight protection in the C200. But for our first three days in LA, we had a big crew and lots of stunts to handle. Then on our fourth day, we had a splinter crew and my lead actress, Hannah Ward. We saved this day for a lot of the smaller, more intimate performance moments and her final confrontation with our 
our lead baddie, played by Omid Zader. Which is a great example of how the C200 can strip down from kitted out with a full crew to a lot more run and gun. But after we wrapped in LA, we still weren't done. We had three more days of production to go on in Texas, which was the complete opposite of the LA shoot in every way. We shot at night, it was all slower paced performance work and with a much smaller crew. So Chase lit it dark with a slightly greenish feel because we didn't want this world to feel inviting at all. And shooting dark is always a bit nerve wracking. Every camera handles it differently and some better than others, but the C200 really delivered for us there too. Inside the body, you have a super 35 millimeter 4K sensor and the dual digit DV6 processor, which stacks up to give us high sensitivity and low noise, which was even more important for our outside shots. Again, we're on a short schedule and limited budget. So Chase didn't have all the lights that we wish we could have to set up outside. So he threw up everything we had and we had to roll. Inside we use haze for atmosphere and to diffuse the shadows, but outside there was none of that. We really had to just trust the camera here and it turned out great in the end. And the film wasn't the only thing we were shooting with the C200. We had two additional C200s on hand for our BTS, but unlike the production cameras, we didn't shoot raw since we knew there would be thousands of clips making up hours and hours of footage from seven days of production. So instead we opted for UHD 4K MP4. And it's solid quality. The footage looks great and there's a surprising amount of range there. So in post, we could pull the highlights back a bit if it was ever a touch overexposed in the day. Of course, the touch screen was incredibly helpful for my team, allowing them to move fast and be more fluid with the production. And they coupled that with some Canon EF still lenses like the L series zooms, allowing them to stay versatile without sacrificing quality. But after seven days of production across two states, we we're finished with a hard drive full of footage in hand. So my editor, Lucas Harger, and I got right to work. In the edit, although Adobe Premiere can edit the raw files natively now, we decided to proxy everything to give us the lightest workflow possible. Then once we had the locked edit, we could flip back to our higher quality footage and send out to VFX in color. And it was amazing to find out how much information we had in those files. The MP4s had nice room to adjust the exposure back down, and that was even more true for all of our raw files. We had six stops of highlight protection above middle gray when at ISO 800. Overall, what you have here is a sub $10,000 camera that can go toe to toe with some of the best, most expensive out there quality wise, and even more importantly, its reliability. We didn't have time for gear to break on us. And no matter what we threw at this thing, crazy heat, cold, tons of dirt and sand over seven days, it never gave us a single issue. And just like I'm always saying on my show, Film Riot, what I care most about with gear is that it's something that gets out of your way and just lets you focus in on your story. And the C200 is a camera that does exactly that.